Hello, it is British Redditor here, drinking an absolutely smashing cup of English tea, whilst reading you some infuriating stories in r slash entitled parents. I do not care if you have cancer, my child deserves your seat! This encounter happened about seven months ago. I didn't want to insult your intelligence because you most likely already know what EM and ME stands for, but I should say that EK in the story stands for Embarrassed Kid and OG stands for Old Gentleman, 60 some year old guy. This kid was very polite and sorry, so this story isn't about him. Also, I'm translating this into English, so bear with me. A little backstory, about a year ago I was diagnosed with a cancer of the nasal cavity, stage 2. The tumour was quite large, but thankfully benign. Edit, people have pointed out I formulated this wrong. By benign, I wanted to shorten the fact it still did not spread into other tissue, thus it was still contained, which is what I thought the word meant. I apologise for my gaps in knowledge. To get it removed. I first had to undergo aggressive chemotherapy to make it smaller. And thanks to the chemo, I had severe alopecia, hair loss, which made most of my hair and even eyebrows and eyelashes fall out. At some point I had to go bald, but I wore a wig. Because I didn't want to look like a skinhead slash neo-Nazi, I'm 6'4 and pretty muscular, so I thought people would assume. So once after a long chemo session in the hospital, I took the bus home. There's only one bus that goes from the hospital to where I live, so I took that one only to see it was absolutely packed. I felt like shit thanks to the chemo, so I asked a middle-aged dude to let me sit. He was very understanding and gave me a spot without complaining. If you're reading this, thanks bro. Two stops later, enter EM, a lovely whale with an I demand a parley with the CEO haircut and a 12 some year old kid. It took her roughly five seconds to see the bus was packed, start looking for a free seat, spot me and start marching, or in her case, trying to fit in the aisle between the seats while shoving other side to me. When I saw her, I knew I was screwed. She then stood next to me and decided to talk to me. This is the conversation that followed. Hey, could you let my kid sit down? You mean me? Who else? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm on my way from the hospital and... Cutting me off. So are we. Nonsense. The stop was a few kilometers away from the hospital. My boy just broke his leg and we're coming straight from the ER. Her kid was standing next to her without any support, clearly embarrassed. He's standing next to you and completely fine. Look here, boy. I'm a 21 year old. My kid deserves to sit down. Look, madam, I'm sorry, but I just got back from my chemo session in the hospital, and I need to sit down and rest. I then moved my wig a bit to let her see my bald head. EM then straight up started yelling in my face. Stop making excuses and get off your fucking seat, you fucking skinhead piece of shit! At this point, I was baffled. I didn't know what to say. The kid was trying to make his mother stop, and we had the attention of the whole bus. She then grabbed me and tried to yank me from my seat. I held on tight and thankfully didn't fall off. Now, enter OG, my saviour. Will you shut the fuck up, you dumb cow? Who do you think you're talking to? With an ice cold voice. Stop assaulting other passengers or I will be forced to step in. Also, every dumb moron can see that this dude has cancer. No, he's just a fucking skinhead. He's got no eyebrows, you twats. Seems like that really offended EM because she spun around on the spot and threw a falcon punch in OG's face. I was shocked and in disbelief. The whole bus was flabbergasted and the kid probably wished he'd never been born. OG then said something unbelievable and a golden sweet karma moment followed. Okay, that does it. Harassing passengers on the bus, physical assault against a passenger and now assaulting an officer. You're in deep trouble, lady. OG then pulled out a badge and told her to stay where she was. Then, he pulled out his phone, called someone, and told her she was being arrested. I couldn't believe it. OG was a bloody cop. At this point, EM was as white as a wall. The bus had just come to a stop, so she decided she'd make a run for it, but the other passengers blocked her way. She then also got charged with resisting arrest thanks to this. Three stops later, a police car was waiting for the EM and EK. EK told me he was sorry for his mother's behaviour and I felt really sorry for the kid. He wasn't a bad child, but his mother was a hellspawn. OG then talked to me and asked if I wanted to press charges, to which I gladly said yes. Took a statement and thankfully was kind enough to let me solve everything on the phone, so I didn't have to come to the police station for questioning. In the end, EM got some jail time, I think it was a few months, and some community service. I, in return, got a good story to tell and the sweet taste of instant karma. Right now, I am riding the same bus home, 
as I just got back from the hospital after a checkup, which reminded me of this. A friend who was sitting next to me told me I should post it here. He, as much as myself, also couldn't believe that such people existed, but it seems I proved it to him. I should also note that the surgery went well, I was declared cancer-free in November, and my hair is slowly returning. Also, I don't need to wear a wig anymore. Well, I think we're all glad you're okay, OP, and thank you for such an awesome story. EK learns the hard way not to steal drinks. Trigger warning. Do not read this if you have a weak stomach. Consider yourself warned. I can already tell this is going to be a good one. Okay, among my many vices, gaming, etc., one that I've had for many years is my addiction to nicotine. Now, I'm not a smoker. Honestly, I hate the smell of all forms of smoke. I use smokeless tobacco, better known as snuff, chew, or dip, depending on where you are in the nation. When you use this stuff, you spit, sometimes quite a lot, and because of that, I've had this habit of keeping an old soda bottles handy. That way, I can spit in the bottle and seal it. No worry about accidentally spilling it and making a mess. This is also the effect of sometimes making it easy to hide what I'm doing. I never expected that it would cause trouble though. Trouble and humour. So a couple years back, I was taking a cross-country trip by bus. About halfway to my destination at a layover in Denver, I had the following encounter. EK, entitled kid, TM, tired mom. Me, me. Taking a seat outside the bus station at a nearby store, as I sit down, I put my half full spit bottle beside me and start checking my phone. Gives me that. What? Huh? Oh no, you don't want that. I want it, give it to me. Yes, the kid actually said, gib. No, now shove off, kid. About this time, the kid ran over to his mother and said something. The lady came over my way and seemed nice, if very tired. Long bus rides will do that. My boy says you won't give him the rest of your soda. It's not, sir. I know full well what it is. Why don't you just, you know, give it to him? But just give it to him. At this point, I just shrugged, gestured at the bottle. The liquid in it was dark as cola, though it sure as hell wouldn't be as tasty. Mum smiled and thanked me, taking the bottle and walked back over to her hellspawn. I decided to hang around and watch everything. The kid turns to me, flips me the bird, and then makes a show of opening the bottle and taking a big gulp of it. You could see his brain suddenly short circuit. Gag reflex kicked in, along with the sudden need to swallow. I could tell that his mind was fighting with itself. Eyes the size of saucers, the gag reflex won, and he blew the liquid out all over the front of his shirt, then pans. Then he started to dry heave, turning several interesting shades of colour too. All the while, the mum was watching him, patting his back. Eventually, she carried him off in the direction of the rest of the room to be cleaned up. That kid looked like he'd never trust a coke ever again. I ended up speaking to the lady later while we were all on the bus. Apparently, the grandmum had seriously spoiled the kid, giving him anything and everything he wanted. Mum, for her part, was trying to teach him the world didn't work that way. I think a little stunt with my spit bottle made a point. Holy shit, I wish I was there to see the kid's face. Ugh. It wasn't really an entitled parrot, instead the grandmum, but the kid definitely needs to learn a lesson and the mum in this case was being really smart. Anyway, thank you all for watching my video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and I'd really like to hit 100 subscribers before the end of the month. Again, thanks all and goodbye.